Hi everyone, this is Nancy LT Hamilton again with yet another video. Um, this one, I've already done a video on jump ring making, but I was at the bead and button show this year with microtools.com and Pepe Tools. And I heard a lot of horror stories about people having problems cutting jump rings, blades breaking, jump rings flying. Um, some people were actually terrified to even use it and they just stuck it on a shelf. And I thought how sad that was. <laughs> And I've been making thousands of jump rings, writing, uh, making a spreadsheet to show you which blade to use with which gauge, me gauge metal and with which mandrel. So I'm going to share my information with you. I will be using the Pepe jump ring cutter for my demo. If you have a coil cutter, it's very similar process. They're slightly different in a couple of ways, but blade spins the same way, mandrels and wire all work the same way. So. Um, I'm just going to talk about this one right now. When you get it, you have basic four basic parts. You've got the winder, the mandrels that you make your jump rings on, and the holder, which holds the coil while you cut it. It also comes with this sleeve, which holds the rotating part of your flex shaft. And you'll have these pieces that fit together with a screw in them and a blade. So, the first thing we need to do is I need to show you how to take your flex shaft apart so that you can put this jump ring uh, cutter on it. All right, here is your flex shaft. Here's your handle. You're going to grab one end <clears throat> with a good grip and the, and the cable with one hand close to each other. I like to hold onto the metal instead of yanking the cable and give it a good tug and they will separate just like that. So you can put this down, watch it, there's grease on it usually. And now we have the handle separated, which we need for safety. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna assemble the blade section. So you put the one that has the um, shank on it into your flex shaft and you can go ahead and grab your chuck key and tighten down, lock that in place. Then the next thing is the blade. Now this is, is a, probably one of the most important parts and one that people tend to get wrong fairly often. One of the reasons people break, break blades or their blades only last one or two cuts is they've put the blade in backwards. With Pepe Tools blades, at least most 90% of the ones I've seen, the printing is on the wrong side. So if you're seeing printing on the top, you've got it upside down. The big, big indicator here, I'm going to zoom in, is that you want the teeth pointing that way. They are going to, this thing will be spinning counterclockwise and all the teeth, it needs to be sharp when you drag towards yourself, okay? This catches, this doesn't. So that's a big important thing, makes the teeth go away from you so it spins counterclockwise. Now we need, see that little pin right there? We're going to put that slot right over that pin, just like that. Then you take the little cap, and that also has a corresponding cut in it. Next, we take the screw and a Phillips head screwdriver and tighten this down. And you want to tighten it. I mean, some of you guys can tighten stuff that women can never open again so not that tight but a nice firm tight you don't want any wiggle in this blade okay so now we've got the blade hooked on and this is the part another part that people have a very difficult time with um, and another reason that their blades break and that is lining this up correctly to line your blade up correctly there's a couple things you need to do one is, see this mark here on the outer edge? You want That's your guide for approximately where it's going to go, where the blade is going to go. I'm just going to tighten this top um, nut right now because I want to make sure that this really truly is on the center. So I took the top off of the holder, flipped it over, and I'm going to see if we can zoom in a little and see where that blade is. It's right up against the wall. So if you use this like this, eventually 
it's probably going to catch or it's going to cut into the cutter or it's the blade's going to break so we need to center it on the holder top loosen this and slide this so that it sits in the center of the track and without carefully without moving anything or breathing tighten it down on the first nut so see how that's sitting in the center there so now I'm going to tighten the bottom nut I'll make sure they're both tight so that this doesn't move while I'm using it so that's that's how you get this in correctly um, and once you get it in so that it fits you can double check if you want put it back on the holder and let me zoom back out come on and it should <clears throat> glide smoothly in the track here then we need to hook this back up to our flex shaft and while doing this you need to be extremely careful because now your cutter is live or as soon as I find the end of my flex shaft and hook it up to it uh, to re put the cable back on you need to step on the gas pedal on your foot pedal a little bit so keep this hand far away from that cutting surface because this needs to spin a little bit so that it can find the sl matching slot on the interior and you're pushing at the same time while set stepping on the pedal so there you go and from now on be very aware that this can cut um, i like to stick my foot pedal under my bench and it's also a great idea to not have your puppies in the room with you because if they step on it and you have it in a stupid location like on your hand <laughs> It got hurt bad. <laughs> oh, while I've got this open, see this? This is your stop. If you didn't have a stop, the coil would go all the way down here and you wouldn't be able to cut the jump rings. As you'd, this would slam into the bolt down here. So this, this keeps your coil. Hey, let's grab one of these 8,000 coils. It holds your coil here so it doesn't go too far so when we load this that's going to be something to keep in mind so i'm going to pick i'm using 18 gauge wire um, this is thin enough that i don't have to kneel it but when you get into 14 and 12 gauge this stuff even though it says it's soft it's not um, you really need to anneal this heavy-duty stuff. This big thick wire, it just makes it so crazy to try to roll it. Okay, so there's a couple of options here for threading this. One is Pepe drills a hole right here that fits m almost all the wire except for it does not fit 12 gauge. So this go can go in like that. Wrong way, of course. And that little um, hole will hold the wire while you, while you spin the wheel here. Let me show you other methods. Cut this off here. I don't like this because, and this is a fussy thing, but I am the lazy, not so lazy jeweler. This is a pain in the butt to me, having to get and cut that wire out of that hole. So I try to avoid that like the plague. The next method uh, is take a little masking tape and tape your wire on like that and then put it into your drill. But even easier method is you put your mandrel in. Oh, let me back up here. Zoom and back. You take your wire and between the teeth you insert the wire okay so now I've got it in the, between the jaws of the winder and I can go ahead and wind for me the winder is okay for making small amount of jump rings but I'm a drill girl I like ugh, 
I like using the um, electric or the battery powered drill. So this is a bad coil. It's a gap in there. That's not great. It's not like we have to throw it out or anything. It's just makes our job a little more difficult. So um, let's talk about this. You can make them all the way to the end here. Um, the thing is you don't want to make any longer. They won't fit in the holder and you won't be able to get the uh, cutter in to get a good head start on it. We'll show you that in a minute. So when you're done, this is the nice thing about not implanting your wire in that hole. You can just pull your mandrel right out like that. By the way, I mark the sizes of all of them on the ends. And with Pepe, they have them actually stamped on the sides over here you might see one but on the smaller ones there's no room so they've marked them down here it's 2.5 3 and 3.5 and 4 just in case you forget and these are in millimeters when you're done with your coil you want to of course disconnect it from your reel and you also want to cut off the little tail that you'll have here and you don't want anything protruding sticking out on your coil okay the next thing we need is some tape. I like the masking tape a little better than uh, painter's tape, I think, because it's stickier. So on this thicker wire, I can just squeeze this, put it on the tape, and roll the side up, and that will compress my uh, coil better. And then one more thing I can do is pinch this end here, and that kind of locks it all in place. Um, I use this technique with, hold on, I'm getting stuff, big thin wire. Uh, it keeps the jump rings from flying around. It also keeps the coil compressed so it doesn't flatten out and you aren't able to cut the jump rings. Like this can happen where it goes sideways and then it doesn't cut them at all. So definitely on, on the thin wire, um, you want to, uh, thin and big mandrels, you want to tape the sides and do that pinch tail on it, okay? Just makes you more successful. Next we want to take, uh, this is Pepe Lube. Rio has something that's very similar in appearance. I'm sure everybody has the formula now. And the reason this lube is important as opposed to using, what I used to use was beeswax and then after that I used liquid burlife. That's what Rio's is called, Bear Life. The thing that I have found is when you use a lube like this, this flaky light lube, uh, it, your jump ring, you don't have to bathe your jump rings. You don't have to really clean them. They're it's like with the beeswax, it got all gunky. With the liquid lubricant, it got, I'd have to burn it off. So this is really nice because it's really easy to wipe off. It doesn't gunk anything up either. So let me take one end off here. Oh, guess where that ended up? Hold on. See how apparently calm I am? <laughs> okay, so I don't usually take this whole mechanism off, but I did just to show you how to line this. One of the things you have to make sure, especially with tape, if you're doing a small set of jump rings like this one, which should not be closed up. What happens is it sometimes it's hard to figure out where that slot is and where your coil is sitting in regards to it. So sometimes you have to take it off just to get this in properly, but generally I don't. Um, okay, so we're gonna put it up here against the stop. It doesn't have to be crammed up there. And notice how wide a swath I lubricated. That's because if I was putting this in without Lifting it, see how hard it is to see exactly where the center is. So I just, any exposed surface, I just lubricate just on the off chance that I don't hit right down the middle. So we're going to go ahead and lock this, start locking this down. This is another thing that a lot of people do is they over tighten this and that will crush your jump rings. And when your jump rings get crushed, there's a good chance that they can be flicked out at you or that the wire, especially the thin wire, can, and I've had this happen wraps around in here in here 
and you don't get any jump rings. You just have to take everything apart and unwind. So this tension is really important. So right now I've got too much wiggle. See that? You want to try to tighten evenly and you, you don't, this is probably perfect right here. It barely moves. I mean, I could go a hair more just like that. All right. And remember how we did this before we put the, we line our, um, cutter up in the slot. Now this is why if you had a coil this long, you could not put your cutter in there. The jump rings would keep the cutter from going in. Remember that you're live now, that your flex shaft is a weapon, as it usually is, not just with this. Try getting your hair stuck in it and tell me it's not. Ow! So we've got it on here. It, this The holder guarantees that I'm in the center. We've already checked to make sure I was. And you want to step on the gas. And when I go across here, I'm going to go kind of fast. And I'm also going to push down gently this way on the cutter okay not hard not too soft just right and you can hear when that engaged right it, the motor labored a little and the sound changed on the cutter so then we just take it out and there we have our perfect jump rings here and the nice thing about using the tape is this is all one unit you can just you know, grab a jar, open it up and dump them in. So that's that. That was easy. So as to blade usage, I just finished this chart and I put it up on my charts page um, under jump ring stuff. And all this blue is an air is the a good combination of um, mandrel size and wire gauge. Uh, the first, the top part is for one and a quarter inch, and then the bottom part is for one and a half, okay? Um, there's a couple little details that I want to talk about. One is, if you were getting flying jump rings, the tape solves that. Although, saying that, sometimes when you're using the wrong blade with the wrong jump ring, you will get some flying. That's why you always wear these, because occasionally jump rings do fly it's you can greatly reduce the amount that fly with the tape like hugely reduce the amount of flying um, before I didn't use the tape and I always had jump rings everywhere what was another problem oh crushed yeah when you get into this really thin oh wait this thing this really thin wire like 20 this isn't even that thin I have some that are 26 gauge this one's 22 that what happens is especially with these bigger coils is they like to flatten out um, another thing that happens is that the um here's an example i was doing my testing sometimes they cut like this the the if the blade is too big for the size and the gauge it can cause uh, deformities within the coil so check the chart again to make sure that you've got the right blade with the right coil when you go into the, this is like the biggest, um, you can cut 12 gauge wire with this. Um, I don't even think Peppy says you can, but I've done it and I know it works. Um, this is 12 gauge and I use the biggest mandrel we have, uh, which is the 12 millimeter. And this got taped up on the sides and of course lubricated and all that stuff. But the big problem was, and I will show you this, is have holding on to the wire um, and you'll see let me get ready and I'll show you inside this drill you can see these little little guys here these little teeth um, we usually put the wire in between either one of these three after the mandrel goes in this big mandrel with this thick wire there's a problem first off the hole is not up drilled up to 12 gauge it's only up to 14 gauge so and then when you look at it down this way there's no space around here to get the wire in so what I did was essentially take the wire along the side and shove it in there 
and then tighten it down. Now you're gonna, when you, oh, I'm going the wrong way again. Am I? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> so because that wire's in there, it's throwing the mandrel off center. So you're gonna have wobble. But it's the only way I've been able to figure out how to get the mandrel to work. And this is not a very good job here at all. You could probably get it better than this. Now this would help a lot too if this wire was annealed. So anyway, I just wanted to tell you that um, one of the other things about annealing is that you don't get the separation of coils. So if this wire was soft, it would compress better. You are almost always going to lose the first and the last jump ring. Occasionally you will lose three to five jump rings, especially closer to the stop area. Um, it's not uncommon and it's nothing wrong with the machine. It's just how the metal gauges work. Sometimes the, the blade just can't go far enough or the metal is so thin that it gets distorted. So I think this chart will help you tons um, to do your best on the jump ring making itself. And remember that if it's silver or gold jump rings you're making, you can refine any damaged or you know, group together ones. Anyway, I think that's it. I think I've covered everything. And um, if you're bre breaking blades, you are definitely doing something wrong. I would check your alignment. I would check, I would check, um, you know, the direction that the blade's in. I would check how it sits on top of your holder over here. Um, the other thing is you may be using too big a blade for your metal or you may be using too small a blade. You're not lubricating. Um, these blades will cut miles of jump rings. Miles. I mean, I've cut, you know, the sea of jump rings you see out there on the same two blades, my one and a quarter and my one and a half. So it's usually something we've done wrong when the blades break. All these little tips and tricks, I hope will make you a much more successful jump ring person. And if you've put it on the shelf, take it out, watch this video a couple times and try it again. You might fall back in love. So anyway, this is Nancy LT Hamilton waving bye-bye. Thank you so much for dropping by and I hope you learned something. Ciao.